Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Rokinon 135 millimeter lens and why you might need a 135 prime in your life. All right, welcome to the channel, guys. My name is Chris. All my friends call me Crunchy. So today we're talking about the Rokinon 135 all manual lens. Uh, it comes in at a very, very modest uh, $499. I actually bought mine for $325, just used on eBay. It's in really good condition. I don't know how well you can see that, but so I got this lens. Uh, hold on. Um, da, 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 uh. So I got this lens because I got this very old 135, I don't even know, automatic. Genuinely, I have no idea. It just says made in Japan. It doesn't say what this lens is. Okay. Well, I got it for five bucks at my local camera store uh, because it was in some bargain bin, I'm assuming because it, it's broken. And I wanted to try the focal length. I have a zoom lens, but it was, I think it was like F4. So I wasn't really familiar with it. Uh, but I ended up really enjoying the bu that budget lens, the $5 broken bit, uh, lens, uh, the step-up ring, or excuse me, the uh, aperture ring does not work at all on it. So I got this guy because I shoot weddings. That's my primary source of photography. Uh, I really needed something fast, but able to get from the back of the church and get in close without having to physically move in front, in front of people's ways. And the uh, 135 is a good way to do that, still get some separation on the background since it's at F2, and since it's usually very dark in a lot of those churches, you're able to keep a uh, lower ISO when you crank up your shutter speed. So this one specifically is the, I think it was last year's model, they might still be make, selling just this one. This is the Sam Yang version. Uh, you can hear that it's got the, it's the non-cine version, and it's got a really long focus pull. One of my problems with this lens, I suppose, is that's the lens hood. Doesn't do that otherwise. And it's the Sam Yang lens hood. I don't know how well you can hear that. Um, it's not a big deal. This is, some people might not like that either, but um, I almost always keep this lens at F2. Uh, occasionally I'll stop it down to like F6 for closer portraits because once you get uh, within its near minimum focus distance, you're, <laughs> you're focusing millimeters here. So another great thing about this lens is its macro compatibility. Uh, I'll throw some examples up on the screen here of me using this lens. And without using step-up rings, you can get very, very, very close. I think the minimum focus distance is gonna be uh, less than a meter, which comes to, that's about how close you can get with this lens. So lens and your body to how close you're gonna get. I actually had to use this, I forgot my step up rings when I went to a wedding. So to get the ring pictures, I just slapped this lens on and used it handheld because F2, yeah, you have a very shallow distance, but I just kind of threw my camera in bursts since to keep me from moving around too much. So one of those fell in focus doing that all the time, um, threw it on a tripod if you have time to make sure everything's really tack sharp. And speaking of which, this lens sharpness is incredible. Uh, I've owned a couple different, I own the 85 millimeter Rokinon, same company, the same thing. Uh, and it, the, the 85 is a great lens. I used that for a long time until I switched to the Sony for the autofocus. But this thing's amazing. This is probably the, if it's not the sharpest lens, I have the Sony 85 probably is. This is a close second, especially if you stop down to like F6, F8. It's amazing. In terms of build quality, it's all metal except for the plastic lens hood with the rubber focus ring, metal aperture ring. I 
forget how many elements it's got, but the problem with this lens is since it is all metal, it is heavy. Now it's not as heavy as like, I think my, it's comparable to my Sigma Art 1.4. They're, they're relatively close, but it is, it's very heavy, especially here's a size comparison. So let me take the lens hood off of this guy, cap. So this is everything taken off of the Rokinon and this is everything off the Sony 50 millimeter. Yeah, it's, uh, It's obviously a much bigger, much heavier lens. It's probably not one I would tote around all the time. When I go hiking and things, I leave this at home because it's a big weight saver to leave this thing at home. So this Rokinon is a very long portrait, fixed focal length. I keep saying Rokinon, Samyang, I'm gonna probably keep saying Rokinon. This Samyang's a very long fixed length lens. Can't zoom, but at that cost, when you get a zoom lens that's f2, it they, it gets exponentially larger. And since it does not have AF, it's also much smaller. You don't have to fit a motor in it, anything along those lines. There's no electronics keeping it as small as possible. And we kind of spoke about uh, how sharp this lens is. It is an incredible portrait lens, but it also makes a good landscape lens because you can get in close with those macro capabilities and get those fine details. And then even if you're far away, say up in the mountains, you wanna pick out trees, anything along those lines or specific hills, this lens does a very, very good job of doing that. Since it is so sharp, if you're at F8 and things are far away, everything's in tack focus. Like I, this lens is how I noticed the sharpening going on in my images. And this lens is how I test when I'm over sharpening my images. And just so you guys kind of get a feel of how long 135 is, since most people have not used these types of lens without zooming or F6, this is the 135 and I'm about six feet away. And this is the 85 Sony, um, by the way, all at F2. This is the Sony 50 millimeter. It is at F2. It's the nifty 50. And then this is the Sigma 35 art also at F2, six feet, all these are six feet. And this is kind of a joke. This is my 11 millimeter fisheye lens at six feet. And along with landscape at 135 millimeters, it does a very, very good job of picking out animals that are kind of far away. Or if you're trying to get closer to animals that don't necessarily want you in their space, it does okay with birds. You have to get kind of close since they're small subjects. It does good with horses and does great with uh, people, especially if you're just trying to pick out people when sitting doing street photography, that works great too. With the stabilization built into my Sony, this lens gets stabilized. And that's kind of why I went with the Sony system in the beginning. One thing I like to do with this lens is shoot fairly far away and then panorama. Here's an example from one of my weddings that I've done that with. This lens also lends itself to Brennizer method, which is when you shoot vertical and then horizontal as well, panoramas, and Lightroom does automatically do those in case you're wondering. I overlay them about 50%, click merge to panorama, and it does a really good job of putting those together into one seamless image. The reason I do that is you get a bigger depth of field. It kind of fakes your sensor getting bigger, especially on a lens that's this long and fast. That's Sammy, she's a bird. Sorry, she wants to play with her bells. So with that, as long and as fast as this lens is, it does a really good job of making the depth of field even smaller once you fake your larger sensor with the panoramas to really give yourself more separation between your subject in the background or foreground. At 135 prime, it gives a very different look and it's, I mean, it's 50, millimeters faster than an 85. Since it's 50 millimeters at F2 longer than an 85, you get more separation. You also get more compression on your background. So it, say you don't have as pretty of a background, 85 is not quite cutting it. I throw this on and we get uh, less background with still plenty of separation if I tossed on like a, a slower lens, slower zoom lens. You may be wondering with the Rokinon, since it is 135 millimeters on full frame. It goes to, let me check. 
It goes to 215 millimeters if you toss it on, say, like an A6000, which gets you a very, very fast F2 on your crop sensor. So crop sensor, 250 millimeters, really good for animals, very good for big separation on your portraits and compressed backgrounds. And that about wraps up why I think you should own a 135 Prime slash small review on the Samyang 135 F2 all manual. This probably is the best COVID lens out right, th right now because as you saw from my example earlier, you can get real close at six feet. So that about wraps up my video on the Rokinon slash Samyang 135 F2 Prime. If you have any more suggestions down the line for videos, let me know in the comments. I'd appreciate it. I'm going to be responding to those for a while. Uh, I'm going to be doing more videos now. I apologize for the two-year hiatus. Big job change, but hey, now we're here. We're all going to learn some things. See you in the next one. <laughs>